Hey, I'd love to see all that red and black. Thanks for doing that and being uh, participating in our Happy Friday. That's awesome. Hey, Happy Friday. Hey, Happy Friday. I think most of you, if not all of you, have maybe met Mr. Peace. Far and wide, giving a positive message, standing up for those who are perhaps victims of bullying and trying to encourage those who are doing that to reconsider their actions and to want to make a positive impact on your life and the lives of people around you and how you can control that. Because the power is within you to do that. So I'm not going to talk anymore because you're not here to listen to me or me every day at the end of the day, right? So I'm going to turn it over to Kevin and Mr. Peace. Welcome. All right, all right. It's great to see you guys this morning. How's everybody doing? All right, awesome. How many of you guys have ever seen me before? Most of you guys? All right, sweet. Cool. Well, hey, we're going to start this morning a little bit differently. Um, I wanted to start with a hip-hop track instead of end with one. So just to kind of wake us all up and uh, get that blood pumping and everything, all right? So if you guys uh, have your hoods, hoods up and put your peace signs, two fingers up for peace. And all of a sudden I go, Booyah, Grandma! And then, 
a whole family of deer. And so I swerved in like the last second, come on like the shoulder, almost like going towards the ditch area. And I just like, it was like one of those moments, I was like, oh my gosh. Get my breath back. And this guy passed me again, tells me I'm number 11 this time. But as I go by, you know, I'm just like, oh. And then I'm sitting in my car, just like trying to get my composure back. And all of a sudden, I hear this knock on my window. And it's one of the deer. And his host, like, he's like knocking on the window like this. And he's like motioning, like, can you roll it down? Like the window. I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, excuse me. I'm like, what? You talk? He's like, yeah. And so he's like, Mr. Peace. I'm like, how'd you know my name? Well, it says it on your license plate. But he said, Mr. Peace, do you know what just happened there? And I was like, yeah, the guy just passed me, he went off me, and I wanted to get him back. I wanted to show him that I was better than him. He said, no, you almost just killed me and my entire family because you were playing the comparison game, because you were worried about somebody went up in you. And guys, as I travel this country, I see so many hurt hearts because of that fact, that if we aren't better at a certain sport or talent or ability or skill or school or class or have the better brand name or the PS4 or the iPhone 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10, I know those are not good, but if you have any of those things, it's all of a sudden, you know, I'm always trying to be better than that person and if I'm not, or at least not as good, then I'm not worth as much as that person. Guys, we talked about bullying last time, and I want to expand on some stuff today and share with you some new stories. But we've talked about how bullying can be verbal, you say with your mouth. We talked about how it can be physical, you hit somebody. We talked about how you can just exclude somebody, leave them out, and that's all the bullying. But whatever you do, those actions to gain power over somebody over and over and over again, on purpose, whatever you do, just know that the biggest reason why people bully, sometimes because they're jealous or they want attention, they want to get someone to laugh at them, they want that power. But a lot of times it's just because hurt people hurt people. That if you're hurt inside here, we talked about that last time, right? When you're born, that cup of water in your heart that gets full, and if it starts to get too full, it'll start to overflow either on ourselves or on others, as you see in the news a lot. And so guys, bullying is a huge thing to talk about. I know you've heard of the name, but like the phrase so many times, but I keep coming back to what's not bullying is even more important. The one-time words, the one-time actions that stand someone's heart forever, right? Can I get uh, like 10 volunteers up here? Yeah. 10 volunteers? Yeah. Um, let me take, uh, I'll take you. I'll take, I'll take Kevin and you next to him, just three. I'll take uh, Rev Hoodie and the guy next to him. Yep, you guys go. I'll take here. I'll take you two right there. How many I got so far? Yeah, sunglasses. Okay, you don't know where yours. Uh, how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we'll do. This, this first row showed me a lot of love, so, so I'll let this, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you guys to go on this first row. Okay, come here. So look, all you guys got to go on stage. Spread out. Okay. Yeah, go. Spread out, though, guys. Give these guys a round of applause. Okay. So hey, look, here's what you guys got to do, okay? You guys got to spread out. So like some, let's make it two rows, okay? So we'll have the girls in the back, guys up front. Okay? You guys spread out. Guys, spread them over here. The don't, I want you guys to spread it out enough so your arms don't touch the So if you have to go further down that way, go ahead. You need to. Alright, are you guys pretty good? Okay, look, so here's what you're gonna do, okay? When I say go, 
for this whole exercise, before I say go, your feet are not going to move, right? So get them like about shoulder width apart so it's comfortable. And these are going to stay glued, right? So your feet stay glued for this entire exercise. Gotcha? Okay, good. So when I say go, go you're going to spin either direction. Doesn't matter, whatever way. Either direction, go as far as you can and hold that spot, okay? So in either direction, as far as you can, hold that spot. Ready? Go. All right, now remember that spot, if it's like a brick or a plant or a curtain or something, okay? You guys got it? All right, now come back to your center, keep your feet in the same spot. Just kind of shake it off a little bit. All right, so you guys get this back in mind. Now close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes. Here, look at I want you guys to all imagine, to all envision, that you guys are some of the most amazing human beings on the face of this planet. You guys can high jump over buses. You guys can long jump 50 feet. You guys can run two and a half minute miles. You guys can run two second, 100 yard dashes. You're some of the fastest, most incredible, amazing, awesome people on the face of this planet. Keeping all that I said in mind, guys keep it down. Keeping all that I said in mind, all that I said in mind when you're ready, I want you guys to keep your eyes closed, to spin again in the same direction and go as far as you can. Keeping all that I just told you in mind, spin the same direction and then hold that. Keep your eyes closed. Ready? Go. You guys can have a seat. Give a round of applause, guys. Good job. Nice job, guys. Nice job. All right, so look. People that went up there, people that just in the audience, what changed from the first time they spun to the second time. What happened? Yeah. I encourage them the second time, right? It's so like their vision changed a little bit. So look, people on average, they increase about 30%. It took me 10 seconds to build them up, to go further than they thought they could go, guys. Look, if I tell all these people and I say, that you can't do this. If I was to reverse it and say that you guys are some of the most idiotic, stupid, you know, just all these adjectives to fill their minds, do you think they would go as far? No. But there'd always be one person, at least, that because I said that, they want to prove me wrong, right? But guys, think about this. If it takes me a couple of seconds to make these people do something 30% better than what they're currently doing just because they changed their mindset. Just think what you guys can do in a whole school year, even a month. By just saying a couple words to somebody, it takes a couple seconds to either uplift somebody or you destroy them. And that pain stays there forever, right? I spoke at a school and a teacher came up on a microphone when I asked about the most painful memories, right? And I've asked you guys this too. But some newer ones that I had to share was that this teacher. She told me that she was, this was like 30 years ago. And she told me that her parents didn't have them a lot when she was going to middle school. So she had to wear the same outfit sometimes twice a week. And this one day, these, this group of popular girls over here, this table of lunch room, they called her over. And she's thinking to herself, oh my gosh, this is my shot. They're actually going to accept me. I'm going to fit in. And they call her over just to all stand up on their chairs and say, everybody look at Kate. She can't even afford to wear nice clothes in front of the entire lunchroom. They screamed at her. And she walked away, and her was down, and she was crying. One of my other friends actually happened back in sixth grade. And in front of the entire class, someone thought it'd be funny to pull this, her seat out from her chair before she sat down. 
So she goes to sit, and she was already getting teased a lot too. Her name was Lynn. And they pull it out, and she falls. She hits her tailbone, right? She's got back problems to this day because of that one moment, guys. Not just that, but she's got that memory on her heart from when people hurt her. This is over 40 years ago. Guys, Mr. Peace. Well, there's some stairs here. Mr. Peace just got engaged this past August. Thank you. You just said some people trying to get cool sometimes. You're right. Thank you. But look, my fiance Samantha, she's the total opposite of me. She, she gets nervous talking in front of like five people, you know. And she got an awesome heart. She's really cool. Back in high school, and it kills me to say this to you guys, but back in high school, I didn't know her. She was two years younger than me. Same high school, but I just didn't know her. She wasn't really outgoing. And she's told me, and she's cried to me that there's been a couple moments, a couple times at lunch back in high school, when she had so few of friends that she had to take her lunch and go eat it in one of the bathroom stalls. Kills me to say that, guys. That somebody's that lonely or feels like they're that bullied that they can't even go and find someone to sit and have lunch with. That they have to do that. My friend Irene, I told you about her. Remember the lady who's 100? She still emails. She doesn't do Instagram or Twitter, but she still emails. And when I was at her party back in February and I had some great cake, it was good in my, my tummy. It was good cake. And I had that party. And I talked about all the great times in her life and all the bad times. And the one that sticks with her again was when she was in fourth grade and somebody made fun of her height. And like someone said here, it, it, that it was to be cool. And that's not bullying because it's one time. But it still sticks with that person forever, right? And I shared that story with other schools about my friend Dominic, the third grader, who when he was in first grade, his fifth grade, turned around and said, you're never going to have any friends over and over and over and over again. And so I'm talking near Chicago just the other day to these first and second graders. And they started telling me, I said, how would you feel if somebody said you're never going to have any friends? And they said, one, one of the person, one of those kids, he would raise his hand, he said, I would want to cry every day if I, if I heard that. Someone else said that I wouldn't want to come to school. I wouldn't want to come to school. And the other person, this is a first grade, guys. He told me that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to born. That's what he said. And that would hurt that much. When we talk about the need for best friends and why it's so important to see the worth of everybody, see someone's heart first. There's this other speaker. His name is Nick Vujicic. Everybody say Nick Vujicic. Everybody say Vujicic. Everybody say Vujicic. Isn't that fun? I know, I know, it isn't. So, if you guys can picture this, the speaker, Nick he has no arms and he has no legs. Okay? So we guys have seen him before, or heard about him. So look, he, he was giving this talk, and he's about this high off the ground. And this three-year-old is with her mom, like in the back, where he was speaking. And after his talk, she starts just like running around, you know, like a lot of carrying the world. She's running all over the place, and finally, she's kind of headed in his direction, right? And so she's just like turning her head, and, you know, running, and all of a sudden she sees him and just like puts on the brakes. She's like, what's going on here? She's trying to like figure out, because she never sees it before, like, where's his arm, where's his legs, right? And then without hesitating, like her next move, this is a three-year-old, right? Without hesitating, she puts both arms behind her back like this. And she hugs him with her neck like this. And it's such a cool example 
of you know seeing somebody for their for this first. If you guys all make a fist right now. Just put your hand in there like this. Everybody go like you got it? Everybody go like this. No, I'm just joking. But everybody hand your fist, okay? This is as big as your heart. That's how big your heart is, is your fist. There was a seventh grader I spoke at over in Brighton at Scranton Middle School. His name was Kellen. His name was Kellen, and he said, Mr. Peace, there's this girl who moved to our school a couple of months ago, and she's got burn marks all over her body. Her family had a house fire. She was one of the two kids trapped within it. One of hers didn't make it. She did. She had third degree burns all over her body. And you can imagine a lot of people looking at her. It's not easy to look at someone like that, right? This guy, almost a fifth year old, even in seventh grade, goes right up to her. Goes right up to her, gives her a hug. He's like the he's like the star football player, like of like that school, like a screen. He's like a really tall kid. He's a really tall guy. Who's that? Is he? Yeah. Is it the same guy I'm talking about? Oh, good. You guys know him. He's tall. Sweet. All right, cool. That's the guy I'm talking about. Look at that. It's a small world. Cool. So look, guys. I'm sure you know on the football field. You know, look at. I get very competitive. Sometimes I become like Mr. War and the basketball court. But guys. You, you know who you are and have that power and that influence and that capability to include those type of people. And if you do that as that huge, you know, popular athlete or just whatever type of person in your school, then people follow, right? And that's what you try to do. And still it pains me to see a homeless body by the bus station. People going out their way to avoid a situation or any interaction with this human in need, when need human kindness is all that is silence. Still they just keep passing by, some zig and some zag, not wanting to have to talk to the man dressed in the rags. But his head down in shame, sitting by his plaid bag, the words on his post are a prayer for someone to lend hand. So I approach him, because my heart drips, yeah, it bleeds. For those less fortunate, our fellow human beings. You see, some people more than anything just want to be seen, especially the dirty and the shun of the society. And if you can't spare a chain for a beggar in the streets, then at least encourage them to get back onto their feet and listen to their story or the sweet song that they speak. For as much as you give, the more you shall receive. It was about two and a half years ago, and I was at the OG, the Olive Garden. And as I'm pulling out, as I'm pulling out, I see this guy who's sitting by the bus stop, like kitty corner from the restaurant. And he's got a bag next to him, like of his belongings and his head's down like this. And he's got this sign, not the exact same one, but one that reads, Eat Human Kindness, right? And what I see start to develop, right, is that what I see start to develop is that people are literally, some of them like the bus stops right there, and they're doing everything they can to not go anywhere near him. So they'll like actually almost like kind of go, I'll go here so just to be exact, do that. But he actually like, like almost like kind of tiptoeing on the other side of the bus stop, like hoping that he doesn't see them, just because they don't want any type of interaction or conversation with this person. Some people put the earbuds in, or they take a, or they take a uh, like a fake phone call from from like their mom, like, "Hey mom, what's going on? I know you're not here, but I just want to talk with you." Okay, bye. and I'm watching this develop, right? So I finally get in my car. I go sit next to him. I give my leftovers too and ask him what his name was. He said his name was Jared. And so I look at him and the first thing I say to him is, I see you. I see you as a human being. I see you. And guys, you think about how many people 
sitting around here in this school in general, in our lives, in our neighborhoods, our community, that just want to be seen. That saying hi can change a life. Smiling can change a life. And so I sat there for like two hours we just talked about life, about how we got to where it was. And it's so cool because for as much as I empowered him to get back on his feet, right, to get on with his life, it's like he encouraged me that much more. For as much as I gave, I received that much more. And I had a friend of mine, he's a professor in Detroit at a community college, and he did this, he had 60 students, 60 zero, 60 students in his class this semester that he did this, right? So what he decides to do is there's a route to get to his classroom. It's like a, you know, if the door, oh boy, that, that could have been bad. Could have been bad. Oh, no, that, that could have been bad too. <laughs> so, what happens is, he said, that there's like a route, everyone's gotta take this route to get to his class. There's no other way to get into that front of the building to go into his class, right? So he decides, He's gonna pretend that he's like someone in need, right? The whole nine hours. So he grabs some, grabs some crutches, scarf, his hat, like just tears up some of his clothes, you know, puts this big winter jacket on because it's like getting close to winter time. Has a sign that says donation to like this little cup. And he's just sitting there. And so the class is about, it's like a civics class, so it's about like service in your in your community and treat your people like your brothers and sisters. And so he ends up sitting like a block away from where the classroom is. And everybody starts to arrive, right? Only five people out of the 60 showed him any type of attention, any type of kindness. One person gave him a donut, one person gave him a banana, a couple people had some spare change. Somebody said, hey, I don't have anything, but I'll keep getting my thoughts. Everybody else walked right by him. Some people went as far as to say, you're a loser, you're a bum, you're a disgrace. Why are you here right now? We have a class, this is a great college, please get lost. So everybody arrives to class. He gets up. He walks in with his crutches. Everybody's like looking around like, what is this guy doing now? Why is he coming in here? And he goes to the front of the room and he starts to you know, undo his scarf his hat, his jacket, and they start to see that it was their teacher. How do you think some of those people felt? Terrible? What else? Yeah. Like, they just the worst day of their life. It could be like the worst day of their life. They, they feel disgraced, ashamed, guilty. What are you guys going to say? Everything that they told him that he was, they, they, they felt that too, yeah? They felt bad, they felt sad, and they were the rhymes with bad. That's what they felt. So guys, think about this, all right? Because I always come back to this, that if you see someone for their heart first, we saw everybody here for their heart first. Do we still have bullying happen? No. We've always said that, yeah, you get some fights, right? As friends. But you work through that because you're friends. As you're willing to. Guys, if you're getting bullied, if something's happening to you, and you've told the person to stop and they're still doing it, and you've spoken from your heart, you've called them by their name, you looked in their eyes, you spoke in a normal voice, and they're still doing it. Or just support to one of your friends, then it's, it's your duty as human being to go and get help. And I come back to the fact that everybody says, no, no, because I'm a tattletale, Mr. Peace, right? But here's the scoop. I got a friend, she's a, she, she was in eighth grade a couple years ago. She sent me a message. And this was after I spoke in her school. She said, Mr. Peace, I'm getting bullied by this one guy. He's my, he's my ex. And he's calling me so many names in front of like the entire class hallways. And it's getting really serious. So I forwarded it to the school counselor. 
She calls him, her, and a police officer into her office. A police officer. It was getting to the point of almost being harassment. And they squashed it right there. Two weeks later, I come back to the school, and she comes running up to me at lunch. And she says, Mr. Peace, you saved my life. I got a friend named Gina, G for short. She's from Chicago. She told me when she was in ninth grade, one of her friends who said it was a big guy, football player, but like, you know, huge lineman, and had a big, booming voice too, right? And so, like, for a couple weeks straight, he just thought it was funny to call out her name across the hall, the freshman hallway. And he'd say, yo, G, you're looking kind of big today, girl. And so one day she went home, and she said, you know what? She looked in the mirror and she said, maybe I am looking a little big. So she skipped dinner that night. And for the next four nights, the next four weeks, the next four years, she found herself in the hospital. She almost died. But he was just joking, right? It was just a joke. Guys, you can never tell me that when it comes to somebody's safety, your own safety, or someone else's, your own well-being, that it's ever tailed to. It's just the right thing to do. But it takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of guts, guys, to be able to do something like that. I remember being back in high school, and there was this guy in my gym class. His name was Paul. I'm almost out of time, right? Is that right? Or no, I, I have till 9.15? Okay, great. So I'm not out of time. Yes, one more time. Yes. So, I'm in gym class, and where's my football players here? Pretty much everyone with a jersey on, right? Okay, okay, okay. If you guys get older, play for the Lions, okay? And reverse, reverse the trends, okay guys? So look, I'm in gym class, my senior year, and I'm playing quarterback, right? Mr. Pete's my quarterback. So, the bell's about to ring, and my friend, Paul, he's, he's, you know, he's very overweight, and he has a really hard time in gym class, because people make fun of him, and you can't run as fast on people. He's not that skilled in sports, all these up the above, right? So he's on my team. Nobody ever covers him because no one ever throws to him. No one ever thinks to throw to him because they just don't think he can catch it and even, you know, get down the field. So guys, I hike it, right? Blue 42! Red 18! Grace with apples! Don't they say stuff like that sometimes, or weird? Okay. So, so I hike it, and I, I'm looking down the field. My, to, I'll be honest, my, my first looks were to my two other receivers that were like actually on the football team at our high school. So I'm like, I gotta go to them first. They're covering them. Like, the guys that are covering them are just on them, right? So I let it go, and it goes to Paul. And Paul's in the end zone, right, alone. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, please catch this, you know. And because we're, we're down three. And so it goes to him. And no joke, the ball, it bounces, bounces off his shoulder, right? And it comes like back like this. And he just like goes and he just, it was like, it was a baby, you know. And he said, I can let you drop it. And he just, and he just like grasped onto it and just like fell to a knee and he held that ball against us, right? And so we went crazy. We we're like, oh my gosh, ball. And we're just like raced to him and like we're jumping around and we're like, what was that game? Like we like spin in a circle, like pockets full of posy. You know, it, was the, it was almost like that, you know? We're doing hokey pokey with him. And, and so he like caught it. And guys, a week later, I saw Paul after school. I saw him on the 
on the streets of the town running to get in shape. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, I, like I, I saw him one time. I was driving by because I was a senior, so I, I had a car and he didn't. I said, Paul, what's going on, man? He said, nothing, man. I'm, I'm just running. I said, okay. Well, just turn your legs like when I caught that football. He said, never had somebody that included me like that. It just, it changed my life around. So guys, all of you have that power. All of us have that power, right? And no matter how hard things get, we still have a choice on how we're going to treat people. We still have a choice. It's hard to maintain the peace when you get a phone call and there's nothing you can say or do. Yeah, that's a protocol. Just pray for putting in the friend's closed casket funeral. His only crime, not being buckled in the back seat. So when they hit the median, he flew at least 50 feet. Out the hatchback of his best friend's SUV. At least when it happened, he was already fast asleep. Headed back home on a 96 eastbound. Took the cops a while just to track the body down. Not the view you just sit and watch, but without a sound. While inside you're screaming about to cough up half a lot. Nothing took the touch because it doesn't seem real. His boy only fell asleep for a second driving behind the wheel. But that's all it took though. You can only imagine all the pain he feels. Parents have to bury their kids. It's surreal. I lost one of my great friends October 24th, 2010. The DD had a couple drinks, so he was buzzed. He started driving, 96, about one in the morning, and my friend was in the back seat. It wasn't buckled. And guys, I can tell you the days to follow, the weeks to follow, I was a mess. His brother was a bigger mess. And I can remember vividly that I, I did not want to even talk to people, let alone try to treat them with any type of decency. But you know what? I started thinking to myself, that Stevie, he would have wanted me to. He would have wanted me to treat people the right way. And so me, by honoring him, would be leaving the right kind of legacy. Treating people with respect, with love, with compassion, with peace. But guys, all of us have that choice. All of us. It's up to you. When I came last time, I might even have some of your bracelets still. But some of you guys came up to me after my talk. He said, hey, Mr. Peace, you, you really touched my heart. And some of you guys gave me some bracelets. These two right here, I just got from Indiana. I was in Northwest Indiana just yesterday doing some assemblies. And every time I do my talks, there's always a couple people, you know, during lunch or after the assembly, they come up to me and they give me a bracelet, right? And I wear these, I, I, I can't wear them all because my, my whole arm will be covered, but you know, I always wear some of these as a reminder that, you know, maybe these are some lives that I say, maybe these are some lives that I touch, or some hearts. But moreover, that these are people that within an hour's time, 45 minutes time, sometimes I get 25 minutes with students, I was able to do something and get through to them. And if I can do that, guys, every one of you can do something like that too, right? But it's a choice. It's always a choice. I got this, I want to show you this real quick. Actually, can I get a couple of... Uh, anybody, do you guys take Spanish yet here? Can I get a couple voluntarios? That's Spanish and volunteers. I'll take my guy here. And I'll take uh, back there. Yeah, okay. And I need one more, one more. Right there. Is that a, yeah, is that like a bandana or a durag or... I think something around the clock. I got some time on stage. That's how I get on stage, isn't that cool? Alright, so names. Wes, Drew, Madeline. Wes, 
Drew, Madeline. Wes, Drew, Madeline. Wes, Drew, Madeline. Wes, Drew, Madeline. Okay, I got it. So now, here's what you guys to do. Wes, come on over here. Do you bowl? Do we bowl too? Okay, cool. Actually, right, so hold that. Okay, great. You're gonna face face that direction. So come, uh, come like here. This X that mark the spot. X marks the spot. Who says that? Pirates. See, look at that connection. All right, um, Madeline. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna come right here. Okay. We use a black balloon because the pirates. Keep seeing these hands, these wooden hands. 
my friend Brad a couple of Christmases ago when I shared this with you guys, when he was going through a dark time, and he had said I was like his helping hands during one of life's greatest needs. When he was getting bullied and teased and put down. So every day I see these hands and I think to myself, how can I just be one person's helping hands? Because if I'm, if I'm doing that, guys, then I'm making a difference. And I'm leaving a mark that people want to remember me for. Right? You guys have all been to a funeral before? Show of hands. Right? Keep your hands up if you've been to a funeral. Somebody that died at two younger than age. If somebody died at two younger than age in, in your mind. Look around. If somebody died at too young of an age, you might have a funeral. Okay, you guys put your hands down, thank you. So look, these people, when they talk about somebody, they're not talking about, you know, what kind of house they lived in or their parents lived in, what kind of car they drove or didn't drive, how much money they had, what kind of clothes they wore. They're talking about the type of person that person was. And if you guys begin with the end in mind, and think about that, how there's no guarantees even in this life, then you start to leave that, like those heart prints on people as you go along. And guys, there's a seventh grader, there's a seventh grader that came up to me at a school I spoke at, and his first name was Antonio. And he said, Mr. Peace, he was already like kind of crying. And, you know, what I had shared with that group, and I shared with you guys before, that I don't pretend to know what goes on behind closed doors. I don't. I come with an open heart, hoping to touch the piece of yours. But this guy in town, he came up to me, he said, Mr. Peace, he just told me that he hates his dad. He said his dad left him and his mom about four years ago in California. And ever since that day, he's just treated people how he's felt. Been unfair. That's just that's that's all he could do with, with the tools he had. But he came out to me after my talk and said, Mr. Peace, starting today, I'm gonna make every effort to reverse that. To start treating people with dignity and respect, no matter what kind of stuff I'm going on. And I told him, look, I mean, you can love, and maybe one day your your, your dad will change his mind and want to have a relationship with you. But sometimes those things are beyond our control. Sometimes our real family. Other people sit next to us, you know. And so you reach out to them for support. Some of your teachers that care so much about you guys, they wouldn't be bringing me here doing these types of assemblies if they did. And I know a lot of you got it because a lot of you have been pointing out the entire talk. All eyes, all hearts. I know some of you guys at first weren't taking it too seriously, saying, hey, yo, quite a bit. But I can read through every one of you guys. I've talked to over almost 500,000 youth guys, almost half a million youth across this country over the last 10 years. I spill my guts up here. And this heart bleeds for you guys. And I get why you do those things, because I was the class clown, I was the one putting the speaker down. But it's because I was so alone and so empty inside. So I'm pleading with you guys to do what's right. I'll be here for lunch today. If you guys need to talk, I'll be there to listen. I don't have all the answers, but I try to be a mirror of what you guys already know and reflect what you already know. So guys, thank you so much for touching my heart. I appreciate it. And just one last thing, I'm gonna leave all my information with your principal with your teachers, so if you guys do need to reach out to me or if you haven't already connected with me on Instagram or YouTube or Twitter, then you guys can do that. I don't always get back to you right away, but I always get back to you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mr. Peace. Let's give a hand again, come on. As far as the little things, and making your choices with the little things, and the words you say. You know, when I grew up, that was a long time ago, there was a phrase that I was taught that really is not accurate. It was the old sticks and stones. You guys know what it is? Sticks and stones. The words may... Now, it's good to have that attitude that you don't let words hurt you, that you can rise above that. But I want you to know, sometimes that can be the most painful thing is he shared.
are the words that you say. So keep that in mind. You know, and you're here at school. You know, I want to. I want to thank you guys. Uh, who's in sea lunch? Raise your hand. Friday, Monday through Thursday, sea lunch. You know, I have been so. And I'm not trying to put any on lunches down, but you guys do a great job at sea lunch. You help with the chairs. I, 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 I gotta admit, I've not had that much cooperation. I'll say to somebody, hey, "You grab this chair." And a lot of times, that, that look. You know, me, me grab that chair. What? You guys don't do that. The sea launchers, I mean, sure, Mr. Ray, and I, and I'll grab two of them. Holy cow. So I want to say thank you. I want you to keep that up. You know, and I, I, I try to role model for you guys. I walk in the cafeteria, and I pick up gross bananas. I pick up wrappers. But you know what? Those that help me with that, that's just awesome. And that's just helping out with your community, with one another, and, and making this a better place, a safe place. So I thank you, and I want to encourage those of you that maybe think about, should I do it or not, is that cool or not? You know what? I think it's cool. You guys think it's cool? You helping out? I think it's cool. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. There's a, a saying that uh, I, I cling to, and it's, it says, uh, it's from a famous person, and he said, those who are faithful with little will be entrusted with much. And it's those little things that will make a difference that will someday step you into maybe those bigger things and making a difference. And so I thank you for that. Now, let's talk about schedule. You're going to what after this assembly? You're going to second hour, right? Check my schedule, I got it right. Right, teacher, second hour. And then you're gonna to go to third hour. And then if you do have a lunch, we're doing the we're doing the Monday through Thursday lunch schedule. So I want to remind everybody. So if you usually have a 